Well, thank you, Russ, for that incredibly powerful story, and to President Trump for so many historic pro-life efforts in his administration. We do have a quick announcement. So there's a lost child. His name is Clayton Becker. And if you are Clayton or you know Clayton, your mom is waiting for you at registration on level M1. So again, that's Clayton Becker, and you can meet your mom at registration on level M1. Last summer, I had the incredible opportunity to learn about life and leadership through my internship at the Heritage Foundation. While there, I was so inspired by the direction and leadership of their president, Kay Coles James. Mrs. James has been involved in the pro-life movement for four decades. She has served under three U.S. presidents, on the board of directors of Focus on the Family, and as senior vice president of Family Research Council. She now leads the nation's most impactful conservative think tank as president of the Heritage Foundation and is one of the sponsors of this summit. Please welcome Mrs. Kay Coles James. Adorable deplorables. <laughs> I have spent most of the morning so far trying to get my emotions under control. When you have been at this for four decades, you cannot imagine the joy of seeing this audience. When I started working with a little organization called Teens for Life, there were 12 of them. <laughs> and I walked into the crowded corridors this morning. And I just want to give a great big thank you to Kristen and the work that she has done to produce this. It was an easy answer when she asked if the Heritage Foundation would be a part of hosting this event. I got into government and public policy because of the life issue. And when I'm 90 years old, that's the issue that's going to get me out of bed in the morning and keep me going. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how long I've been at this and why I feel the way I do this morning. So I walked up to this young lady and said to her, I want you to know that you are one of my heroes and I admire and respect the work that you are doing. And her name was Lila Rose. <laughs> this was several years ago and Lila looked at me and said, Kay Coles James, oh my gosh, my mom used to tell me about you when I was a little girl. That tells you how long I've been at this and how I am so encouraged by your presence this morning. So there's a lot that we do at the Heritage Foundation and a lot of policy issues that matter. But I'm here to tell you that while we fight for access to health care and to make sure we get it exactly right, that's important, but what difference does it make if we have not yet confirmed the right for you to be here and live and walk and love among us? <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can fight for a strong national defense, but defend what? We need to defend the right of every American citizen to be born and live and walk and love among us. <laughs> we can and we will fight constantly 
for free trade and free markets and a civil society, but all of those things are only important if you have the right to live and walk and love among us. So you can count on the Heritage Foundation and you can count on me to stand with you constantly and forever on the pro-life platform. So how, how did this all get started almost four decades ago? It's fascinating. My husband and I believed that it wasn't just enough to secure the legal right to life, but we must be engaged and involved with those women who choose life. And so we helped to found one of those pregnancy help centers. And for those of you who are involved in those ministries, please know that for those of us who are on the front lines fighting in the legislatures and in Congress, you give us credibility because you are the heart of the pro-life movement. So thank you for the incredible work that you do. You make us credible. And because of that work, I had been asked to do a debate. I mean, I know some of you may find this amusing, but there was a time in this country when we actually debated the abortion issue. I mean, we don't even do that anymore. They take it as a foregone conclusion. I used to debate the abortion issue on college campuses all over this country and indeed around the world. So, if you ever want to know how would you answer this, the hard questions, the ones they think we don't know the answers to, I got some good answers for you. But I was standing on a debate stage and a, my opponent looked at me and said, how dare you? How dare you dictate to poor women what to do with their bodies. You with your clearly middle class values. I wonder how she know what's in my bank account. How <laughs> <laughs> does she know my values? And all the pieces came together for me in that moment. And I was able to step back and say to her, so you work for Planned Parenthood and you counsel women. Yes, and we are delighted to do that and we stand with women and the choices that they make. So, so tell me how you would counsel a woman that comes into you and says through her tears, I already have five children and I can't keep food on the table, heat in the house or clothes on their backs. And my husband, my husband, he's an alcoholic and sometimes he gets violent and I even have to throw my body between him and the children. How would you counsel that woman? And in the debate she said, you know, I would counsel that woman, and you have to say this dripping and oozing with fake compassion. I would tell that woman that one of the best choices she could make for the children that she already has and indeed for the one that she carries would be to choose abortion because what loving mother would bring another child into those circumstances? And I had the privilege of saying to her that night and then many times since, I have a vested interest in how you would counsel that woman because that woman was my mother and that child she carried was me.
and she. <laughs> she had no idea the plans and purposes that God had for my life. She had no idea that I would have the opportunity to dine with kings and princes and serve presidents and be the president of the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> And so when I speak, I speak for those children. We, you and I, have the privilege of being engaged in what I believe to be the most important civil rights battle ever. <laughs> we, you and I, are fighting for children whose rights are being taken away because they're really, really small, really, really young, and live inside their moms. What better civil rights cause than fighting for young people who are discriminated against because of size, age, and place of residence? I told you at the beginning I've been at this for 40 years or more. And I came here this morning for a couple of things, but I believe the most important thing is to say thank you and to recognize and to be energized by you and to recognize that the labors that we've been at for so many years is bearing fruit. But I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to be absolutely fearless as you stand for life. I need you to take advantage of all of what you will be receiving while here and after here. Know that the Heritage Foundation is always there for you. Go to the website, get educated, get armed so that you can take on the battle and the education. I need you to not just come to the mountaintop experience and be here at the march and get excited. I need you to stay engaged every single day. And here's what I need you to do. I need you to be givers to pro-life causes. And we need to train our young people that philanthropy is important. Find a pro-life group. I'm not here to tell you which one, but they need your financial support. Support them. Back in my church, that's where they say, she done left preaching and gone to meddling. <laughs> I need you to show up next year with five more friends at the march. I need you to educate yourselves so that we can win by winning the debates and the arguments. We've got to grow our movement. I need you to go out and in winsome and loving ways, convince your friends that loving life and protecting human life is one of the most important things they can do. I need you. The last two things I need you to do, I believe, are the most important. All of this activity needs to be translated into action. 
There is a responsibility that we all have. The President of the United States can never make America great again until we secure the right to life of every preborn child. So therefore, I want you to identify pro-life candidates at not just the national, because we need Congress, and we need state legislatures. One of the most pro-life things you can do is vote. And I'm not afraid of the last one. And I do believe that it is the most important pro-life thing we can do. And I encourage you to join me in this. I am one of those people who absolutely believes, I have the audacity to believe in the power of prayer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we commit to pray, we can see this thing turned around. Oh, see, I got me a helper back there. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> I am counting on you to do all of the above, but if you do nothing else for this issue, I need you to vote and I need you to pray. Thank you and have a great conference.